and uh, we'll try to all get done together. And if you have your Bibles this morning, if you'll turn with me to Joel, uh, Joel, the book of Joel, just go to the Old Testament, and uh, we're going we're gonna to look at that this morning as we look into the Word of God. Tonight I'll be in uh, Luke chapter 13, if you want to be reading that for tonight, and for, I'm just glad you're here this morning, amen? <clears throat> but uh, we, we want the blessings of God, and uh, who don't want the blessings of God, amen? And we need the blessings of God. But God has, a, God has a plan, and God has a format, and uh, God, God, does, God is sovereign. God's in control, and we can trust Him. And God being sovereign, that means He can, he can do anything. And uh, He's all power. He's all authority. He's all rule. And as we go through this time of where this church is in a 21-day uh, prayer and fasting, and for you that are visiting, I'm going to touch a little bit on that today. But we're going through that uh, for God's direction, uh, for just not just our personal lives, but for the life of this church. I just truly believe God's going to do something in the next three years. Uh, right here on the side of the old cattle hill, it's going to be, it's going to bring honor and glory to the Lord. But I want you to read with me this morning, and I'm going to look into the Word of God, and I want you to look down with me in chapter 2 and verse 18. I want you to see the blessings of God. I want you to see... I want you to see the I wills at what God says because God, what God says, He always does. You know, God always is, He always was, He always will be, and He's God and He doesn't change His mind. Now, we have, we have clergy today that thinks God has changed His mind because the culture has changed and they've, they've changed with the culture, but they're the ones that's off base. And they're called false prophets and false teachers and and I can tell you today that we need to always line up with God's Word because God is, God's Word is inspired Word that, that comes directly from the Lord. Amen? But we all want the blessings of God because you say amen to that today. I'm going to read this last part of this and we're going to look at that today. and We're going to look upon the blessings of God and you know God does love us. Amen? And uh, he, He's a John 3.16 God and uh, we quote that and we believe that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? And God, for God sent not his, his Son into the world to condemn the world that through Him the world might be saved. Isn't that wonderful? And that's good. That's good. And God came to seek and save that which was lost. See, what people don't understand is God left the portals of glory and came uh, he came through Jesus Christ, God incarnate, Jesus Christ, and he died for the sins of mankind. So what separates us from a holy God is sin. Y'all with me? And, that, and that's what separates us. And, and what Jesus did, he came and died for that sin where, where you would not be separated from him and if you put your faith and trust in him. So that's, uh, that, that is why Jesus came. It's called the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the gospel is good. But I want you to look at today in, in verse 18, and uh, as, I was, uh, as I was getting ready this morning, this is not what I was going to preach on. I was going to preach out of Luke chapter 13, and I talked to the Lord about that yesterday, and I said, now, Lord, I don't have a message for tomorrow night, so I, I don't know what to do except just keep seeking you. And uh, seeking him, you know, he didn't tell me anything till this morning. And uh, he changed all that. And today he wants this preached this morning. And Luke 13 preached tonight. I'm more excited about Luke 13 than I am about Joel chapter 2, I'll just tell you. But I can tell you this morning that God has the blessings and God wants to give you the blessings. And, and what you want to do is line up with the Lord God. Amen. Look down with me in verse 18. Then will I, the Lord, be jealous of his land and pity his people. That's a good thing. Everybody say amen. Look at all these I wills. Yea, and the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, as ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will, notice all these I wills, remove far from you the northern army, and I will drive him into a land of barren and desolate with his face towards the east sea and his hinder part towards the uttermost sea, and 
he, and, and his stink shall come up and, and his ill savor shall come up because he had done great things. So all these I wills come from the Lord. Look now with me in verse 21. It says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord, I, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beast of the field, for the pastures of your wilderness do spring for, from the tree, beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their fruit. Be glad then, then, and be glad then, and you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain and former rain and the latter rain in the first month. That's good things. Everybody say, I will. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will. Everybody say, I will. I will restore you to your years that the locusts that have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the, and the, and the, and the palmer, palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. See, God sent that over in chapter 1, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But he sent a plague upon them. And now you look in verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, and he he has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed or be put to shame. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon the flesh of your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants, upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth and blood and fire and pillars and smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered. For in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And the Lord said, In thy remnant, whom the Lord shall call. Now I want you to pray with me this morning and I want you to understand the blessings of God. And God has a path for his blessings and we need to understand that today. Amen. Let's pray today. Lord, we come to you thanking you for your kindness and goodness. Thank you for your grace this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all the diligent uh, labors that you have brought into this, to this uh, congregation. Those that are praying and fasting, uh, over personal things and over the, over the things of the church and over, over the purpose of their lives. Lord, I want you to bless every one of those that have maintained that fast. And Lord, I want to ask you, Lord, to bless those that have come into our congregation today that need encouragement. I want you to encourage them today, Lord, as only you can. And Lord, if there's someone here today that don't know you as Savior, I want you to draw them to yourself. I want you to turn the light on, Lord. Help them to see their lostness and their separation from you, and I ask you to save them today. And today, Lord, we ask you to move in a mighty way. We, we, we have, we're like Nehemiah. Lord, we've all sinned. Lord, we've all fallen short. And today, Lord, I want you to look at those sins and, Lord, examine each of us today. And, Lord, we lift that all up into your hands. We need you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. When you look at the ch first chapter, I got a little small commentary in the front of my Bible. My Bible is pretty old, and it says this. It says, the book of Joel, which cannot be dated accurately, is a prophecy stimulated by ruinous invasion of locusts in the farmlands of Israel. Have we ever seen a plague? I think we have. We've seen droughts. We've seen pet pestilences. We've seen tornadoes. We've seen hurricanes. We've seen flooding. We've seen... We see all those things and we dismiss them as just the hardship of life. But, you know, who is in control of the weather? It's, it's, not, in, it's not CBS or NBC, amen? It's not TV6. We know that for a fact because they miss half of that stuff, amen? But Joel warned the people that this cat catastrophic was a catastrophic type a uh, plague was a harbinger of worse things to come from the Lord if the people did not repent from their sins. And that's what he used it for. Nonetheless, even though the Lord might punish them severely, he would afterward restore them 
and pour out of His Spirit of all the people. And, that, and God did that. He did that on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And He'll continue to do that. We pray for revival and those things are good. I, I, I pray, I seek revival every day of my life. I live in repentance every day of my life and I seek revival every day of my life. But I can tell you, if we'll just listen to the Lord and watch what's going on all around us, God is talking to us, but we're not listening. My wife said, you don't need those hearing aids. She said, your problem is that you don't hear. The problem is you don't listen. And she's right. But I got the hearing aids anyway where I could at least say I could hear. Amen? But I can tell you what America's problem is, what the world's problem is today, is they're not listening to what God says. Because God wants to bless your land today. God wants to bless the land today. This country was built on Christian Judeo principles and, and that has not changed except the people have changed and they want to call evil good and good evil. And that's the day and age which we live in and we voted for that so don't act like you didn't. And some of you have pulled that lever for so long that you don't care if they kill babies, you don't care if they have same-sex marriage and you don't care just as long as you, you're not going to change your party because that's the way you've always been and you'll always be that way. Well, let me just tell you, none of these parties are going to fix the problem that we have in this, in this world today, in this country. None of those parties. I tell you, I hate to tell you this, but there's not Democrat or Republican in heaven and they're sure not an independent. I can tell you who's in heaven. It's those that's born again as the names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And that's, that's where we've got off track because we, we got our minds focused on everything around us except the Lord God Almighty. And the God's talking to us, but we're not listening. And it says, it says in verse 1, it's in the word of the Lord that came to Joel the son of Priel. Now I want you to see this today because when you look at verses 1 through 12, you see, you see there's a locust plague, and you can read that yourself this morning. But I want you to know that locust plague, he describes all this, and, and he describes what's going to take place, and just, just one part of it, in verse 8, he, he says, And lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Now watch verse 9. And the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord and the priest and the Lord's ministers mourn. That's where they need to start today is in the church house. It needs to start in the pulpit today. Because we've got, we've got clergy today that has adopted to let everybody keep their sin in the name of you pay me all the money you can. And then they, want, then they want to be entertained and get loyal and leave and their lives never have changed because the clergy will not stand up and preach God's word because he's afraid that if that deacon's wife gets mad over there that's, that, that's under control of the whole church because of the sin that, that their son or daughter's living in, if he preaches on that, then, he can't, then they're not going to fund him anymore and he's going to get fired. Well, go ahead and fire me. I don't mean that in an arrogant way either. I just know who I'm preaching. I know who, who I serve. And it's not going to be a man. Don't, I, don't want these clerk, I don't want the treasurer, the assistant treasurer, to tell me who gives the money. I don't want to know those type things because I'm going to pastor everybody the same. I don't care if you got one nickel or you've got $5 million in your bank account. I'm going to pastor everybody the same, and I don't know nothing about you financially. Amen? It all starts in the pulpit. You look down with me. You look down with me and in verse 13 he talks about gird yourselves and lament you priests. You preachers, howl and ministers of the, of the altar. Come lie all night in sackcloth you ministers of my God. For the meat offering, the drink offering is withholding from the house of your God. Listen, the first place that he starts cleaning out is the preacher's house. We got preachers today need to get right with the Lord. We got preachers you can't tell you, you can't tell their lifestyle is any different than the world's lifestyles. And, 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 and I can tell you today that 
It should be a difference in the preacher's house. Amen? I want to tell you something. We have a lot of fun at our house. But we don't have to do things that's ungodly to have fun. I can tell you that. We have the biggest time. Matter of fact, Friday night, here, here, here comes all the kids over and the grandkids. Here they come in. Here they all come in. Cindy's done whipped up all this food. We come in and they eat. Boy, we've opened presents for birthdays. And next thing you know, we're playing phase 10 and I'm trying to beat every one of them. I'm talking smack to them. Amen? Why? Because we have fun. We have fun. And what the, the fun part of it is when those grandkids talk that smack back to me and I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's when it gets good, amen? But a, pre, a preacher's house needs to be an open book. People all be able to come in and see, hey, there's, th th this is a real preacher here. Amen? Now, I want you to see that he tells them in verse 14, he says, Sanctify you a fast in chapter 1. Call a solemn assembly and gather the elders, all the inhabitants of the land and the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Listen, as the preachers get right with the Lord, the, the, the preachers are going to call the congregation into a time of prayer and fasting. Amen? And he tells them, he says, Alas for this day, verse 15, the day of the Lord is at hand, and as destruction from the Almighty shall come, is not the meat cut off from before your eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. Yet you can see today that he is bearing down on the preachers. Turn with me in chapter 2, in verse, uh, in verse 15, he says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call in the psalm of assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that nurse and, uh, uh, nurse, and let the bridegroom go forth to the chamber and the bride out of the closet, and let the priest and the minister of the Lord weep before the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. It's the preachers that need to get right with the Lord first. Amen? It's the clergy across this country that needs to get right with the Lord today. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, church, I'm just telling you. And you need to listen to me because in the last days they're going to fall into itchy ears and doctrines of devils during that time. And, and we're in the last days. You can take a picture of the church, preachers tell the truth, and there's a lot of empty seats. And you, you can take a picture of churches that don't tell the truth, and it's a mega church, and, 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 and they're just... They're pat, uh, bouncing a beach ball all around and there's smoke going on and there's beer out in the foyer waiting for people when they come in in the foyer and you think I'm lying to you, just go, to, just go upstate, you'll find it. It starts with the clergy. And then when the clergy, clergy lines up, then, then their homes line up, then the people can line up. Amen? Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you I'm lined up. I'm lined up. I don't know what you're waiting on, but I'm, I'm not. I, hey, I'm lined up. And I ain't perfect, and I'm not, I promise you that. But I can tell you today that I'm not looking for sin. I'm, I'm looking to get rid of sin. Amen? But if you want the blessings of God, you've got to get away from that sin that, that so much has got you so controlled and that's what was wrong with Israel. Yet those locusts come, you're going to see it in the Word of God. If you'll just go read this, there's a drought and there's, there's, there's cattle that can't eat. There's, there's all kinds of uh, 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 catastrophic things going on and the blessings of God are waiting for those that want to turn from their sin and He wants to bless them but they, they want to keep their sin but they want the blessings of God. There's no way that's going to prosper. It's not going to happen. You can't, you can't live in a carnal way and expect God's spiritual blessings upon your life. It's not going to happen. You can act like it happens, but it's not true. Y'all with me? Now I want you to see in, verse, in chapter 2 and verse 12, it says, Therefore, also now saith the Lord, Turn you even to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. This is the part that people have trouble with because they don't mind confessing that they do some wrong. Matter of fact, they'd be a little bit laughter about it, a little arrogant about it, and ha, 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 I shouldn't be doing that. But, yeah, I can go ahead and influence your kids. 
influence your grandkids. You got men today that will not sell them, they will not give their lives to the Lord. I'm not saying they didn't get, I, I'm not saying they're not good people. I'm just saying there's men today. The problem is in America is men today that want to keep on. To, they want to have their little lifestyle. They 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 want to they want to keep their sin, but they don't want to leave their home. And what they're doing, they're leaving their home by by living in that sin. They don't understand that because God designed the man to line up to be the spiritual leader of the family. Amen. God's not changed His mind on that. Y'all understand that today. So when the man of the house lines up like the preacher should line up in the, in, under the word of God, when the man lines up, then the home starts lining up. But you can't keep all your things that you want to do over here. Some of you want to be a playboy and see if you still got it and flirt around and all those type things. And your mom, here, here she is over at home trying to handle three kids and, and trying to feed them, trying to, trying to figure out how to come up with money that you spent because you had to have it where you could, you could buy the things you wanted to because you got to hunt. Amen? I'm just preaching on my own life what I'm doing. But there was a day in 1996, my, 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 my heart got lined up with the Lord, and my house got lined up. But he tells him, he said, he says in verse 13, he says, tear your hearts and not your garments. See, what he wants, he wants your heart today, and he wants you to tear out your heart to him today and not do it all on the outward appearance. He wants, he's looking at changing you on the inside. You understand that today? We carry it around like a badge of honor. We, we think, well, we can, live, we can live this carnal life, but when I go to the church over here, I'm going to live this sanctified life in front of everybody. You can't combine them. When I, when I, when I gave my life to the Lord and I was 39 years old, the Spirit of God came into my life and He called me to preach, to be a preacher, teacher, pastor. That's what He called me to do. When he comes into your life, it's the same Holy Spirit that Peter had. It's the same Holy Spirit that John the Baptist had. Amen. And when you got saved, you had the same Holy Spirit they had. And you may have the gift of help. You may have the gift of works. You may have the gift of encouragement. You may have the gift of administration. You may have a, you're going to have a spiritual gift if you've been saved. And you're going to be able to use that gift wherever you're at in life. Y'all with me say amen. Whether you're working at the public school or whether you're working in a hospital, whatever it may be, God, God, the Holy Spirit of God is going to guide you to be able to be a witness for Him. Amen? But you can't be this way over here around one group of friends and party it all up and you can have this old women's night out and you can go all the, fly all the way to Las Vegas and get out there and act like a harlot and come back and broke and you come back and here, here's, you, here's the rest of your family. They've seen what you did. But you, of course, everything in Vegas stays at Vegas. And now, liar, liar, pants on fire. Anyway, here they come. Here, and you've affected this part of the family. Sin's going to affect everybody around you. Y'all with me? Y'all love me. But if you want the blessings of God, that's what you got to get rid of. You got to get rid of the junk that you've created in your mind that's okay. And line up with what the Word of God says. Amen. I'm not talking about walking around being holier than thou. We got enough of that too. I'm talking about having a relationship with the Lord and not hiding things. See, whatever you hide, it's unrighteous. Amen. I better help get off that. Some of you fix to go to the bathroom. I can tell. Amen. I can tell when you need to relieve yourself. It's all over your face. I got to get out of here. I'm trying to help you. Amen. I really am trying to help you. Because, see, I lived all that old lifestyle. And I could write you a book on that lifestyle, and I'd be ashamed for you to read it. But when God lined me up, I'm ashamed of that lifestyle. Before God lined me up, I was ashamed to be called a Christian, but I called myself a Christian. 
Y'all with me? Now watch. Here we go. Here we go. Y'all still love me? Now watch. Verse, verse, verse 13. Tear out your heart, not your garments. He's tired of the outside walking around acting like it. Amen? He wants your heart today. That's what he wants. He wants your life today. He wants to be Lord of your life, not a byproduct of your life. He says, he says, tear out your heart and not your garments and turn to the Lord your God. Here he is, for he's gracious, he's merciful, slow to anger. You don't know what I've done. Hey, it don't matter because what he did. He died on the cross for our sin, amen? And because of that great love, he, he, he is gracious, he's merciful, and he's slow to anger, and he has great kindness, and and he and, and and relents of him of the evil. Listen, he's not looking to he's not looking to perform evil, but I can tell you today, he's gonna get your attention. He's gonna get my attention. I believe he's got the world's attention, they're just not listening. Amen. I believe they want to listen, they just don't know how to listen. Now watch. He said in verse. 14, who knoweth if he will return and repent or relent, talking about the Lord, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering, a drink offering, until the Lord your God blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a class, a solemn assembly. Now I want you to see something today. I want you to see these priests that he has told them to line up. He's told them to line up. And in verse 17, the priest, you minister to the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. You need to get right today. If God's called you to preach, you need and, and you're not doing what God wants you to do, you need to line up today. Amen? Amen? And it says, Line between the porch and the altar and say to them, Spare the people of the Lord and give not thy inheritance to reproach. And the heathen shall rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is thy God? Now I can tell you today, if, if, if the priest, if the, if the, if the preachers, if, if the bishops, if the elders do not line up with, with what the Word of God says, then you need to get out from underneath what those people are teaching. Doctrine is important. Only reason I'm a Baptist is because I, I line up, I, I, I believe the Baptist faith and doctrine is closest that come out of Jerusalem when the church was established. Amen? You go read it for yourself. It's out there in the foyer. But if you read that, it all lines up. That's the only reason I'm a Baptist. That Baptist has nothing to do with me getting to heaven. It has everything to do with preaching or teaching and learning the right doctrine. Amen? Do you understand that today? So it's not the denomination that's going to get you there. Well, I'm a non-denomination. Well, that's still a denomination because they got a set of bylaws. Amen? they got a set of elders or whatever they got. What, it, it's all the same. But I can tell you today that you need to line up under good doctrine. You know, when you say things for like, I, I don't care where you go to church, just as long as you go to church, that's dangerous. Because there's sometimes they preach and teach things that, that, that are heresy. You need to know those things. And I keep my ears open on what they're teaching and preaching. I, I pretty much know if you need to go there or not. Amen. And I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm going I'm to stay under God's word. Amen? Now stay with me because here it is. Everybody say, let's quit. God's sick of this lifestyle. He's sick of it. You can play the game for a lot of years, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to eventually catch up with you. This lifestyle over here is where you're going to find love, peace, joy, temperance, self-control, meekness. Amen? You can really have all those things, but it's going to have to come into your heart. Amen? See, it's a heart issue. It's not a knowledge issue. It's a heart issue. See, he wants you to put your faith and trust in what he did, not in what you're doing. Or how you did it. I've heard people tell me I've been saved, but I don't remember, I don't remember the date or time. That's always bothered me. 
Who cares about the time? Just as long as you know it happened. He came in your heart, amen? And he come in your heart at seven years old or 70 years old like old Don West back there. He got saved and he was 70 years old. Amen? And faithful. I've seen, I've seen people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s be saved right here. I've seen preachers get saved here. All those things are relevant in the day and age in which we live. Listen, God is in the saving business. That's what he come to do, was to take you out of the bondage of the stuff that you're living in, that you think you're having a good time, that's such a struggle in your life, but you don't want to give up the struggle because you don't know about this life over here. You're not going to know how good it is until you, get, until you give your heart to him. You know, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I'm thinking, why did I wait so long? What was I thinking? It's kind of like my hearing. I can hear, I'm just not listening. I believe that's where, where Satan gets us today. He shields us from listening to what the Word of God says. Amen? Y'all with me? Now, now Here's the I wills. Y'all remember all them I wills? Verse 18, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people? Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine. Y'all see that? Y'all see how it all works? You see how it works? Do you not understand how it works? It's called repentance. See, there's one back there repenting out in the hallway. <laughs> Getting right with the Lord. We need that in here. Amen? Your fruit is going to tell on you. It's either good fruit or bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. A bad tree can produce bad fruit. It all goes back to the fruit. Amen? Where's the fruit? I've heard a lot of people say, well, yeah, I'm fine, I'm good, but they don't care about they don't care anything about being in the Word of God. Don't want to hear the truth. They don't pray unless you're in trouble. They they don't want to be around God's people. They want to be around their people. Because they don't like how God people are. That tells me that their fruit's bad. Amen? I mean, it all goes back to the fruit. And what God wants to do is bless your life today. If you'll turn from that old bad fruit tree and get over here where God can make you a good fruit tree, amen, and he'll make a difference in your life today. Amen? You understand that? There's not a sin he won't forgive today. Not a sin he won't forgive except one. And that's you rejecting him. He, he's not going to make you receive him. That's in your court. Amen? There's a lot of people testify here today that God has made a difference in their life. A whole lot of people. And he'll make a difference in your life today. But you're going to have to line up with him. You want the blessings of God, you're going to have to line up with him. Lord, I've preached what you told me to preach because I'm sweating hard right now. Do you love the Lord today? He already knows. Do you honor Him with your life? He already knows. Do you make a difference in other people's lives for the cause of Christ? He already knows. What God wants to do, He wants to restore your life today, not tear down your life. You've already tore down your life. He's the master rebuilder. Amen? This old place right here is a hospital for sinners. And Jesus is our doctor, and the doctor will see you now. Amen? It's a place of restoration. It's a place of recovery. And this is a place that people can come and recover under the name of Christ. Amen? I called John Hayden one day, and I told him, I said, we got a, 
we got a radio network that goes out on the parking lot. If some of your deputies want to come and sit on the parking lot and listen to the sermon and, or listen to the worship service, they can hear the whole thing. They never have to get out of their car. They can tap into our Wi-Fi. They can use what they want to, and they can be a part of our service, or they can even come in. We'd love to have them. And I'm going I'm to get that word out because there's state troopers, there's people that can't be here on a Sunday, but they need encouragement. Amen? This place should be a place of encouragement to people. And when people come up, they ought to feel the love of God in people's hearts. But you can't feel the love of God if you don't have it in you. That's what Jesus wants to take care of today. Amen? Lord, we come to you thanking you for your love. 